All right, let's bring in Michael Anytime. Balboni. He is former Homeland Security Advisor for New York State. Sir, thank you for joining us. What jumps out at you about this situation? The, the randomness of it, the, uh, but then the timing, the fact that he waited until he was in an area where he had a lot of uh, unarmed targets, that he could just do this very uh, spontaneous attack, take out as many individuals as he could as quickly as he could. Um, these types of incidents are nearly impossible to anticipate and stop. It is the greatest challenge facing security and law enforcement right now. We heard one of the witnesses who was inside the baggage claim area describe eerily what had happened and the fact that he came out of the bathroom and was shooting people and then stopped to reload and was shooting people again. Is it surprising to you that he would be able to go on for that period of time, given that there had to be security and police in the area? I mean, if you think about what it looks like when you are down in a baggage terminal and you're getting ready to leave, you know, it does seem like there would be law enforcement in that area not so far away that they wouldn't be able to come in in the time that it took to reload. What do you think about that? Well, we don't, well, we don't know yet, and, and hopefully there are surveillance cameras in the area that will tell us this, is whether or not he looked around ahead of time and decided that there weren't any law enforcement individuals around available to stop him or at least giving him a window. You know, the fact that um, it, it, there's an indication he did not – want to die doing this necessarily and so he was planning to get off his rounds as as effectively as possible and so we really need to know you know what did he do ahead of time and in terms of just you know these types of things again because of the spontaneous nature and remember it's seconds even though it seems like a lifetime before it's over yeah. and so it's very hard to respond in a way where you're right on scene you have the uh, line of sight you're able to to engage with a firearm the individual who's doing this. Very, very difficult. You know, whenever these situations happen, of course, we pick apart exactly how it could have been stopped. In the case of a nightclub, they say there should have been more armed guards around who could have done something about it. Um, in this case, no doubt, people are going to attack the idea of traveling with a weapon. It wasn't that long ago. Right. I knew people who were going on hunting trips. You couldn't check your weapon when you got on board. And it was you know, impossible to transport, even for a hunting trip or whatever it was that you were trying to do to transport weapons. Um, as the guest before you, Pat Bronson, said that H.R. 218 changed that. Do you see that being reversed now? Will that be the thing that gets attacked? Well, I certainly see it as a, um, as a red flag for the folks that do the screening of the, of the luggage, the baggage, to try to spot when these things are being transported, when weapons are being transported, and perhaps alert officials uh, when they arrive, then maybe there, there'll be a way that uh, they'll have to pick up these weapons separately, maybe even in, in a separate part of the airport, it's because I think that the, on, on the, the gun lobby is really going to push back against the ability to, to put these things in the hole and travel with them, particularly for hunting and things like that. Yeah. So I, I think it's going to be, and initially, there may be a, a outcry for legislation. It might be handled best in terms of the inspection and response should someone want to travel with this. Michael, thank you so much.